Well, good morning, good folk. I'm going sourcing. But before I do, I'm on... You could stop at five or six stores. Or just one. There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there. For the fond recollections that lie there. In that old curiosity shop. Well, I was hoping one of these days I would run into that. Do you know what that is? Of course you do. Well, you recognize the pattern as iris or what collectors call iris and herringbone. And we normally see it in the, the marigold bowls, which I'm always making fun of. <laughs> but this is a glass shade for a hallway or a bedroom. They're asking $10 for it, which is not bad. So yeah, they actually produce these in the factory. This is not a bowl that got drilled. That's a ceiling shade. Years ago, I knew a woman that had two or three of these in her house. Many, many years ago. I like the blue color a lot. I guess if it were green, I might buy it. But uh, at $10, eh, you know, I guess to an iris and herringbone collector, they would flip. We'll just leave that there and... Oh, there's a thing for scooping cranberries. All right, look at that. Do we have to pick it up and turn it upside down? No way. You know why? Because that handle screams Heisey. And so does the clarity of the glass. Now, I'm not familiar with that pattern, but... We will take a look. And then you'll see why, uh, well, let's take a look. There's the H. You didn't see it. Hold on, let's get in there. See it down in there? There it is. Way down in there, there's a diamond with an H in it. See it? Hi, Z. That's a nice picture. However, I really need to take a look at this and make sure that that's not a crack right through the bottom of that handle and it sure does look like it yep I think we've got well let me go off camera and do a closer look I think it's cracked all right let's take a close look at the lamps here right down here in the front ah, <clears throat> you know I recognize from the style of the two sockets that this isn't an older lamp now here that's made of metal. It's trying to look a little bit like cloisonne, which is, of course, enamel. Oh, there's a little dent there on the side. Not a big problem. But I can tell by the way the lamp is constructed, it's been rewired. Mm-hmm. This lamp is going to date somewhere from the 19... Oh... 20s and 30s and it's not bad it's a nice little size I like that little size of it that little dent we can forgive it's not rusted and probably the old sockets are in good shape so that might be that's a $10 lamp we'll see I'll think about that I don't have any room for it but look at these two lamps back here and these have glass prisms we're going to take a closer look at these they've also been rewired and i think there are two there's the other one over there so nine to, uh ten dollars for the pair uh if we're not missing any prisms now these are glass okay they're not plastic and so these which would be for a, a mantle or a buffet are going to go back to the 1940s, 30s, 40s, even into the 50s. As chunky as it is down here, I'd say we're, we're more likely into the 1940s. But let me take a closer look and see if any of these glass prisms are missing. They're very unique. I'm sorry, I might be too far away. Okay, we'll come back in a second. But this is a nice little metal lamp here. I'm going to think very strongly about that one. 
Look at these. Now, I don't know if I can use them or not. They're $5 each. I'll have to think if I've got lamps at home in the basement. Now, you know how many lamps I've got. A ton of them. Okay, you know what? Well, they're okay, hand-painted. Five dollars each for two matching shades. Uh, I should probably pick those up and have them on hand. And look, here's a bunch of these chimneys. Those are really cheap. Uh, all right, I'm gonna think about those shades, but I'm bound to have some lamps at home that need shades. There's a basket. Uh, I see some EAPG over there. Let's slide down here and see. Uh, that's okay. Uh, Six dollars. All right, I'm not over the moon with that. And now, don't you forget the clear glass, because sometimes down here uh, there's one of those cornflower coffee pots. But you know, a couple of those, I don't think you can sell those on eBay anymore. I think they explode or something. Something with the glue on the handles, they come undone. And I've seen these before. These are those little crab, I think this is glass big, $4. And there's one, two, three, four of them in there. Those little, uh, little bake, you bake little crab cakes or something or other in those seen those. Uh, oh, look at that thing. What is that? I don't think that's old. No. And this, I've been... Every time I come in here, I pick this up, but it's got chips in it, and I wish. Not potato chips either, you know what I mean. I love that thing, but it's all torn up. All right, this is a noisy store this morning. There's a lot going on, so I hope you can hear me. Uh, oh, there's some of that. Now, I don't collect this, uh, but I have one or two plates that were gifted to me years ago, and then I told everybody, please don't send me any more, because I, I, I'm appreciative, but I don't collect it even though the pattern is called the Old Curiosity Shop. See on the back? And they're all different. They all have antiques on them. I'm not a huge fan of it, stylistically speaking, so, and, and I don't collect it, but there it is. And... Yeah, $8. The only reason they have $8 on that plate is because somebody in the back room has been told to price the green glass. That even has a chip on it, so that's not worth it. Yeah, it'll glow. Big deal. Big deal. But yeah, this... Uh, um, have you discovered that in many of your thrift shops now, anything that's green because of the uranium content? If they're clued into it, they'll just put a whopping good price on it. And hey, you know what? Okay, good for you. All right, good for you. I uh, just can't make any. Are these old? Mm, no. Tuscan kitchen, 1990s. <laughs> All right. Yeah, a lot of the green glass is now put into... Oh my goodness, I'm about to. I'm about to, I'm about to. Please don't have any chips. Now you know what this is. Oh, it's in crystal. Don't we wish it were in green? But if it was in green, it would not be $3.99. Is it chipped? It is not. Oh my word. Okay, what's the pattern? You know it. 
We're gonna talk about it in the car. <gasps> Let me put it in my cart fast. Oh my word. Oh my word. Okay, finally. There is a porcelain coffee pot. It's one that's very common. I can't remember what the name of it is. Colonial Kitchen or American Hearth or something. Um, but it's pretty common. But what is normally missing is the dripolator top and there it is. This is almost always missing when you find these. And I'm gonna buy it just because I want another one of these dripolator tops and it has a lid. Uh, the pot itself doesn't feel to have any damage to it, and it's only priced at $7, which is well worth it, even just to get the percolator, to the dripolator top. Now, it will say porcelain under there. I haven't picked it up yet. I guess we'll take a look at it out in the car. Uh, okay, good deal. Okay, I think I spy a crisscross reamer for five dollars, and that's. Can get through. <laughs> okay, I'm blocking someone. Uh, let me see here. Uh, the uh, anyway, the Hazel Atlas crisscross reamer. It's a pattern a lot of people recognize. That's in good shape. It's five dollars. Not a problem. I don't know if I'll pick it up or not. I like this. Copyright L and M Incorporated. I don't know L and M Incorporated. It's okay. What's the price? Somebody's already picked at it. Three dollars. Eh, that's okay. Am I out of focus? Probably. Okay, let me see here. There's a lot of action in this store today. I don't know why. It's not even senior discount day. What's down here? Oh, there's old Autumn Leaf by Libby in green. Mmm. Looks like they, uh, they're not sold out. What they've done is they, um, they go through the shelves and they pull out things that have been sitting here for ages but hasn't sold, which is good because now there's room for new stuff. Slim Pickens, Slim Pickens. Wasn't he on Hee Haw? Didn't he play the banjo, Slim Pickens? There's some old, either Fire King or Pyrex. Yeah, that's Fire King. See there, Anchor Hawking. I don't need anything like that. Hmm. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the old curiosity shop. I'm Scott, back in my truck, wet ones are essential when you go thrift shopping thrift shopping i guess i forgot my polygrip today because i can't speak um yeah there's nothing Ooh, have you ever been thrifting and you pick up some nasty old greasy thing with nicotine and bacon drippings and ooh, 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 ooh. uh okay well enough of that let's put that down yay what an exciting start to the day. You know, I only bought two things in that thrift shop. Just two things. Indiana Glass Tea Room. I love it. Of course, we prefer it. Well, I shouldn't say we. A lot of people will will um, prefer this in green. Yeah, this is crystal. But it's very popular with Art Deco collectors. I paid four dollars for it you can all see that let's get that off of there very popular with deco collectors because of the <coughs> geometry if i if memory serves it came in two styles this and then without the ruffles this is the ruffled one but there's also one that just sort of stops right there and it's just geometric at the top it's a thick heavy uh glass called tea room Remember, a lot of the glass companies made glass for restaurant use, ice cream shop, 
use, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, commercial, not necessarily domestic. And so you can find lots of pieces. Oh, drat! Fiddle sticks. <laughs> well, it's the day before Halloween, so spooky things are happening here. Uh, I don't even know what I was saying. You can find banana split glass dishes and whatnot for these crimson sugars, I think. It came on the scene <coughs> in the late, <coughs> late 20s into the early 30s, and we love it. Oh, happy day. Of course, I already ran my lips about this in the store, so there's no need to go on and on about it here. But there's the porcelain mark underneath. Yep, okay. Great stuff, heavy, thick, good quality, 1930s and 40s. That is, was one of their most popular patterns there, that uh, colonial kitchen, but super duper to get the dripolator top because they just don't seem to hang around. They get separated. And uh, these have man managed to stay married for, oh, what, over 80 years? That's wonderful. Okay. I'm going to have a sip of my iced coffee and then have a Ricola. And then I'm off to the next thrift shop. Coming with me? <laughs> Hope so. Now my windshield wipers just came on. What on earth? You think I'm kidding? I didn't touch them. This is bizarre. Ah. Well, here's some little pieces of depression glass. I don't quite want to spend that much money. Uh, $2.50. You see that? There's two little um, dessert bowls there. And then these are, uh, these are, these are $3 each. So, no. I don't think so. Well, I think I am more than happy to grab this Fire King Philby mixing bowl. I don't normally find the mixing bowls. Two dollars. Yes, sir. Okay, see the Fire King down there? Well, I guess if I could focus for you, but we don't even need to see it. Sapphire blue Philby. Little nesting bowl. Mm-hmm. Ah, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Look what I found. Now I have to tell you, there's a surprise with this. Okay, so I found this first. Look at that. Feel that. Well, you can't, but I can. There's a little indentation there. What does that mean? Something was supposed to sit there. This looks like an underplate for a cheese and cracker set. Let's take a closer look at it. It's frosted glass, it's from the 30s. And there it's got that sterling. See there, sterling? You see that all the time when this sterling decoration was applied. Um, Six dollars, five dollars and 50 cents. Is it possible? Could the cheese stand to be somewhere? <gasps> There it is. Oh my goodness. <coughs> I'm getting all choked up. <sighs> so on another shelf, there is the cheese compote. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Yes, let's put them back together again. <gasps> These two have been inseparable since they were made in the 1930s. Well, they were inseparable till they got to this thrift shop. And then they got priced separately and they got separated on the shelf. But I have put them back together once again. And as you can see, there is a separate price there on the cheese compote. So there's the underplate and the top. Okay, you know what? That made it all the well worth it for stopping at the traffic lights what a find, what a find.
Well, super duper Superman, how excited I am to be putting the underplate and the cheese compote back together again. You know, it's so much fun to do that. And when you're out thrifting, when you find these underplates, yeah, with the little indentation, look around. Because most often, if the cheese compote has survived, it's probably been priced separately and it may be floating around somewhere else in the thrift shop. It's great fun putting them back together again. Quintessential uh, item that was owned by our grandmothers in the 30s were those cheese and cracker sets. Look at this. Talk about over the moon. You didn't see me find it because, excuse me, it had just been put out and I picked it up as quickly as I could and got out of there. This is a piece of Falstoria glass. Yeah. And this is mid-century. No, I'm trying to remember. Well, the 50s. And the false story either called it Caribbean <clears throat> blue or or Caribbean. They had a they, they might have had a derivation on the spelling of Caribbean. I'm trying to remember. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Seascape. And I think this is a gel for preserve, what they would call a preserve for jellies or preserves. I think that's what it was. And there was a couple of other, maybe one or two other colors. So this is in their Caribbean or Caribbean blue color, mid-century, Falstoria, polished bottom, lovely piece. Oh my word, I was so excited. Um, and it's in really excellent condition. So. There we go on that. That's the first first piece of this I've ever bought. The wonderful thing about having books is sitting down at night and just flipping through the books and then you'll start to memorize things. And when you find items in the store, you go, oh, I know, I think I know what that is. I think you develop an eye for quality and then you buy it. So nice 1950s false story. And if you were wondering what this is next to me, I'll show you. One of the little tricks I've learned is, as I'm outsourcing, I stop at every single U-Haul store I can find, and there's a place where people can donate. And in the, I don't know about where you live, but I often can get free packing paper. Make sure it's clean every once in a while, you know. I certainly don't want this paper if someone had pork chops wrapped in it, but this is clean, free wrapping paper. And I pick it up anytime I stop at, at uh, the, the little, uh, what did I just tell you, U-Haul stores. Listen, you got to economize somehow. Okay, let's go to the next shop. Well, good folk, what a day. I had a great time thrifting, and I'm so glad you went with me. Now, you didn't get to see everything. Some of the packages I have not even opened yet. So you're going to have to come back and join me tomorrow, Tuesday, on Halloween. That's right and I'll have a thrift haul. You'll get to see everything that I purchased today, including if I can figure out some of the makes and models and so forth and so on. All right, so it's Monday. I've got stuff to do because tonight is live sale. But in the meantime, you have, ooh, do I have a new supervisor? In the meantime, you have yourselves a lovely afternoon and hopefully I'll see you tonight at eight o'clock. Until then, from the front porch, I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop saying, thanks for watching, wait for the cat. And so long for now. Who invited you to the party?